We are here tonight to discuss job creators. We will be hearing briefly from each of a diverse set of presenters. Hopefully you will really know what a job creator is by the end. Our first presenter is representing an unrepresentable group. She's here on her own because anarchists by nature are not organizable. And she's all I could get. Warm welcome for somebody that just left drug court. Sue, me, bitch. I was in small business my entire life and never met one person with an adjusted income over one million dollars. The whole idea of privately held business is to not show it. <laughs> Meaning have your business give yourself IRAs, insurance, a company car, pleasure travel, personal computers and everything else so that your own cost of living is low and your business income is not high. <laughs> One time I owned two decent sized high ticket retail stores, which did over a million each, by importing and distributing items throughout the United States and Canada. My highest real income from all of that was probably netting somewhere about $500,000 to $750,000. I hid most of that with accounting tricks. You think politicians lie? Try meeting with an accountant. <laughs> But no matter what I made, or how many people the Obama tax threshold will or won't hit. Why would you want to take someone's money out of their pocket, and just hand it over to the government? That really don't make a lick of sense to most of us. The government is just another lawless entity stealing from the good, and giving to the bad, and using my stolen money to pay jackbooted thugs to arrest me and my friends for taking some pleasure in life. Why does this government hate happiness? I'm being punished for being a job creator. And now our next presenter representing for the Libertarians. Warm welcome for Don Paul. The urgency with which the President is pushing his jobs proposal on Congress is cause for alarm. By people like me. Much like Obamacare was rammed down the throats of legislators, who love the rich, by legislators, who have a stupid love affair with the less fortunate. And, to which then Speaker Pelosi quipped, we have to pass it to see what's in it, because supposedly the Senate would change it and send it back. In the same way, the President's jobs plan has fuzzy meth, tax hikes and long-term repayment on short-term spending. The president is proposing a nearly half trillion dollar stimulus. Once again, following the same failed policies we saw with his last exorbitant spending spree. The growing economy and improving employment numbers show that he's failed. Paying for another stimulus on the backs of job creators in the form of tax hikes is illogical. It's as stupid as taking your boss to lunch and then expecting him to pay for the food he eats and the one year of spending promises will take 10 more to actually be paid for based on the project completion dates. I mean really. Who would ever borrow money up front to do a major project, and then pay back the borrowed money over time with interest to the lender? How stupid does he think we all are? The way to fix our economy is to do what Anne Rand said, and that is to get government mawakers to leave rich people alone. We are the important ones in the world. Without us you're all nothing. We built that, not you. Thanks. Ron. For your speech. Our next presenter took time off from his philanthropy work overseas to represent the Democrats. A warm welcome please for George Clooney. Hello Whoopi, thanks for having me here. A really beautiful crowd you have here tonight. There is a huge difference between a millionaire, someone with a net worth greater than one million dollars, and someone that has an annual income, in excess of one million dollars. Someone with an annual income greater than one million dollars is most likely a multimillionaire, 
unless they only work one year or they blow every nickel they earn. And to keep this completely straight, the proposed surcharge is 2% of income over $1 million per year. So make no mistake, there will be a bunch of famous or powerful people that will have to pay that 2%. I am definitely one who will. A lot of CEOs, bond traders, the direct descendants of Sam Walton, and most investment, bankers to name some more. The following people will not have to pay another nickel. 1. The founder of a small business with $20 million in gross sales that pays himself a $500,000 a year salary. 2. Someone with $10 million in the bank earning 8% in annual income. 3. The guy that owns the local coffee shop where you get your coffee. 4. Independent plumbers, contractors and the like. 5. The founder of a small business that now employs 100 people who draws a $125,000 a year for his own pay. 6. Partners in a medical practice grossing up to $5 million a year, where each doctor draws a salary in the $200,000 to $500,000 a year range. And finally 7. Anyone with an adjusted gross income under $1 million. These brief examples show that the fair taxation policies proposed by President Obama and Democrats in Congress are benign. Anybody that tells you different is using an old mind trick. If I can scare you, then I can get you to stop thinking rationally. If I make you think you can trust only me while I'm scaring you, then you will do whatever I say without thinking. This trick has been going on for millennia. Folks, don't fall for it anymore. Thanks, George. Our next presenter said, he is not campaigning here tonight. His campaign staff gave me a memo which stated that he's here to raise donations to feed hungry puppies in some storm-damaged state near the one he was previously governor of. Unquote. That's what the memo said. Tonight he is representing capitalism in high finance. Please welcome Mitt Romney. Thank you people. You don't need to applaud. I just love coming here. Audiences are just the right size. I plan an across-the-board 20% cut in marginal tax rates which delivers way more aggregate dollars to wealthy people than those who can't succeed like I did. This cut, along with a few other tax changes, such as repeal of the estate tax and the alternative minimum tax, which has been a constant source of financial irritation to all wealthy people trying to cheat on their taxes with creative accounting. That would give back an estimated $3.6 trillion to $3.8 trillion over the next 10 years to the real Americans. You know. The job creators. I will also cut the corporate income tax rate to 25%, which will make it a lot easier for the non-monopoly corporations to pay close to zero federal taxes just like the big boys do. About two-thirds of this amount would go to taxpayers making $200,000 a year or more. That's about 5% of all taxpayers, but this is an important 5% because they are the job creators, you know. The real Americans. Not the fake Americans like my opponent in this campaign. America needs a white horse like me to fix things. Oy vey. Thanks, for that, I guess. Our next speaker has not made any statements about not campaigning, so I guess he is. He will be representing himself and the White House. Warm welcome for President Barack Obama. My American Jobs Act is the way forward for opening opportunities for the unemployed Americans wherever they live. The plan includes new tax cuts to businesses to support hiring and investment. My plan has three main tax cuts to provide immediate incentives to hire and invest. 1. 
cutting the payroll tax in half for the first $5 million in wages. This provision would cut the payroll tax in half to 3.1% for employers on the first $5 million in wages, providing broad tax relief to all businesses but targeting it to the 98% of firms with wages below this level, yet targeting their books in a way that makes new hiring easier. 2. Temporarily eliminating employer payroll taxes on wages for new workers or raises for existing workers. I'm proposing a full holiday on the 6.2% payroll tax that firms pay for any growth in their payroll up to $50 million above the prior year, whether driven by new hires, increased wages or both. This is the kind of job creation measure that the Congressional Budget Office has called the most effective of all tax cuts in supporting employment. This also is targeting their books in a way that makes new hiring easier. And 3. Extending 100% expensing through the next year. I proposed the extension of 100% expensing, which is the largest temporary investment incentive in history. That will allow all firms, large and small, to take an immediate deduction on investments in new plants and equipment right here in the good old USA. Thanks Mr. President. Our next speaker is quite colorful. I think you may know him from his work on Fox News, and he will be representing for the Republican Party tonight. Go ahead folks, give Glenn Beck a respectful greeting. Zeke Heil. Zeke Knight. I'm not a policy wonk, but I am a thinker. The Manchurian candidate, Barack Hussein Obama, wants to brainwash you into thinking that raising taxes on the job creators will fix everything. It won't. The Nazi liberals are just trying to eat your babies. It makes blood shoot out of my eyes. It's time to wake up. Wake up real America. When the going gets tough, Americans show up. Hear me now and do exactly what I say. Show up and take our country back by force from the communist, secular Muslim, liberal o fascists who want to control your thoughts, steal your gold, gay marry your children, and enslave job creators. Well, I guess we kind of expected that. Sorry folks. The next person tonight is a person I work with in the past. She's the kind of comedian that does not do jokes about her naughty bits. A real force for social reform and here to represent the NAP. Give it up for Janine Garofalo. Yeah, an IP fat chance they ever get their due representation in Congress. You want to know who the real job creators are? Well, do ya? You bunch of pugnacious indignant sphincters? Two-thirds of the U.S. economy comes from consumer spending. If consumer demand increases, then companies will hire to meet that demand. The Republicans, bless their hearts, believe in supply-side economics. That means if you support the supply side of the equation, then that will build demand. What? You're not with me on this one yet? This has a well-defined scientific basis known in Newtonian physics textbooks as putting the cart before the horse. So we are capitalists, folks. You got to pick a side. You're either a supply-side planner or a demand-side planner. It's either, if you build it they will come, or if you need it I will build it. These are two competing economic theories in the sense that Pete Jacobs an Iron Man triathlon winner is in competition with Tony Stark the Iron Man character in the movies. One produces actual results, but the other would be way better if it wasn't fictional. Both have their fans. And we are told by the news, with all of economic theories, that the reality of what works is somewhere in the middle. It's true that you can generate economic growth without consumer demand, and you can satisfy that demand without the factors of production necessary to create those products including capital. They work together. 
One of the problems with modern supply siders is they forget that another factor of production is labor. Labor is in both the demand and in the supply. Without an educated, healthy, productive, and well-paid labor force the demand for goods will dry up and the supply will become lousy and unreliable further muting demand. It's a bad cycle there because capital can simply move overseas where a cheaper but less productive labor force is available the wealthy owners can reap huge harvests of money in the short term. This reduces the buying power of ordinary people by tapping into their savings and retirement plans, which in turn makes people desperate and removes their bargaining strength with employers. You see why the GOP promotes their plan. Eventually we will all be back to the grand old days of serfdom and the elegance of royalty, and ordained leaders instead of elected servants will rule over us with unstoppable sovereignty. Look. <laughs> All the GOP speakers are drooling in a daydream just from me bringing it up. I'm more of a job creator than any of you idiots. I spend myself broke on the stuff your factories produce. <laughs> Thanks, Jania. Thanks for your passion. Our final speaker is supposed to be representing the average American. Not like a man on the street for a news filler, but a really average person. Let's welcome Joe Average. Geez, I'm pretty nervous about coming up here and saying something stupid. <laughs> One thing that we, as a collection of all people, have to rely on is the rationality of most of the people. Sure, we have some nutballs. But they, however dominating on our TV screens, are the exceptions, and not the rule. So nearly all people will make the wisest choice they can with the available means and the available knowledge. That's key. The kind of supply and demand that Adam Smith spoke of in his book titled The Wealth of Nations was assuming certain things, like there wasn't illegal or unethical perversions of the markets like unregulated monopolies. So before you go thinking the invisible hand of the market will fix all things, you better make sure there isn't an invisible cattle prod of the market poking around the invisible hand of the market. <laughs> Monopolies have been around before we had that word for them. One of their diabolical acts is to restrict the amount of production in order to drive up prices and maximize profits. You can't get away with it if there are many eligible competitors and they don't collude to fix prices like OPEC does. You can if you are Walmart or Coke Industries. The same supply and demand perversions work for labor. The longer an employer can wait to hire an abundance of people begging for work, the lower the prices that the employer has to pay. So a slowdown might temporarily lower their stock price and cause middle class people to sell off their retirement account cheap. But in the long run the stock price will bounce back and the lowered wages will stay low for decades and the wealthy will have bought the stock you sold on to cheap. So potential employers aren't obliged or even encouraged to hire people just because our money promises to give them a tax cut. How about those non-factory job creators that the GOP keeps talking about? There is an idea called satiety, which basically means that if you are full, you stop eating. But it's general so car ownership, houses, clothing, etc. If you have five dollars for a dinner and you show up to McDonald's you might reach S.A. Tiri. Perkins and not so much, you'll be hungry and broke. Go to a country club where after you paid annual membership and they allow you in, the dinner is still going to be at least one hundred dollars per person, so since you weren't allowed in, you will be starving but at least you aren't broke. <laughs> now the typical person that pays a far lower rate of taxes than you isn't the apprentice, or the line cook at McDonald's, it's the people at the country club. Typically they bring home a net amount of money from 15 to 2,000 times more money than you do. The food budget equivalent to your $5 is closer to $75 to $10,000 for them. So you can clearly see, they can have SAT nearly everywhere with plenty of change. That means they already have lots of extra money available to bring to bear wherever they please. There is a certain bifurcation point where if you get wealthy enough, your wealth accumulation accelerates. So with all this wealth accumulation, why haven't they just rushed out and hired unemployed people? 
role that make them instant national heroes. It's because they are rational. That's why, if there isn't a demand for new products, or a lot more of the existing products, it would be foolish for them to spend any of their wealth. That's called throwing good money after bad. Needless spending is not a big problem for the wealthy. They don't go to yacht buying rehab. <laughs> so with their taxes already shockingly lower than mine, instead of just equal let alone higher, and them not hiring people, why would lower taxes for them change things? Well, it won't. The job creators that the GOP keeps promising you come to the rescue from tax cuts are fictional characters. The only job creators you should have any respect for is, you the middle class consumer, and you the middle class employer. Your tax burden is the one Obama wants lowered, but somebody has eventually got to pay the bills. That's why he wants to roll back Bush's tax cuts and add a 2% surtax on the extremely wealthy. Let them start to carry some of society's load. Their free loading from a position of gated community obscurity has gone on long enough. Let's erase the real estate agent's red lines, move the gerrymandering voting lines to places that truly represent us, and paint this country purple. That's it for the evening, folks. Another round of applause for all our guests.